Good morning to everyone and welcome to this meeting. An interview with our Rector Major John Angel Fernandez Antime, Artime in its third year, third edition, which by now is a part of six, um, six meetings that year after year from 2020 onwards help us to deepen our understanding of the programmatic lines that Father Angel has indicated us as a part for the general chapter. Let's thank Father Angel for this uh, time, for this busy time, uh, uh, especially in his plenary session of the Council, which he started fresh from a tour from the world, from east to west, and he has just arrived a few d days ago. We thank him for this incredible, incredible energy that he has. Thank, a big thanks to the Salesians of Italy, of the training sector, and who have been uh, promoters of this initiative, especially Don Francesco Marcoccio, Don Piergi Luigi Cameroni, and the others. We thank uh, Don Gigi Lanotte and his email communications team for the initiative of the technical part. Thanks to Avil, Alex, Ricardo and Olivier from here in Rome who are helping me in the international community of theology students of uh, Zeferini Namuncura who are helping me with the translation in English, Spanish, Portuguese and French. And the other people who are instrumental in this work. Uh, I hope we speak slowly so that we can help them to, to translate well simultaneously. For those who are already familiar with these interview sessions, you know that there's already the possibility of uh, intervening with questions by posting them in the comment space on YouTube or Facebook, depending on the platform that you're using. Let's prepare ourselves to, uh, to welcome Don Angel for this interview. Here we've got Don Angel. Welcome. We hope everything functions well. He's here from Waldoco and we are live. Thank you, Don Silvio. Good morning to everyone and we thank you for this moment. Dear Don Angel, let's, uh, let's begin directly. The objective of this third series of meetings is to approach the charismatic identity, beginning from the sec second programmatic line that you indicated us. It is urgent to take the meaning of Dami Animash Cetera Tolle. Don Angel, these two words, identity and charism, are for many people like two caskets containing precious treasures. You sense that there is some part of something of great value inside, but you don't really know what, what it is, and you don't have the key to open it. With your unique and immense experience of the Salesian family, encountered in these nine years alive, operating in more than 100 nations and 91 circumscriptions, when you hear these two words, identity and ca identity and charism, what do you think? What, what comes in your mind? Thank you, Don Silvio. Don Silvio, I think one of the strengths that we have is um, the possibility of communicating with simplicity, simplicity that is not superficial a way of speaking that is very clear. The first thing is that, according to the second uh, line of programmatic line of action, it is the urgency that I believe is really important, is really important and urgent. And we cannot take it for granted, for example, that uh, evangelization for us is something that takes comes in evangelization is something that comes to us very naturally. It requires it 
requires our conscience. At this point, we arrive at these two words, identity and charism. Identity, first of all, means from that which I have reflected uh, with the help of the uh, Magistero and um, the general chapters. Identity means exactly opposite what Don Vigano would say. Not everything is the same. Not everything is of use to us and not, not everything helps us or is useful to us in the same way. Identity is in the first place is a huge strength, is a huge force, is a huge force to feel ourselves as Christians, as disciples, missionaries, as disciples of Christ Jesus, at the heart of which, at the center of which, one needs to find God, God in his con concreteness, God who, who is incarnate. This is our identity. Secondly, the Salesian identity. The Salesian identity is connected with our charism. Sometimes, I notice that Salesian, our Salesian conference are, are priests. And they say to themselves that I can be a priest. And uh, being a priest, uh, being a priest, uh, as a huge gift does not mean does not mean being a Salesian priest. It is important to know first of all and to be aware that we are Christians, that we are that's our identity, and that as Salesians of Don Bosco we are we are apostles, we are disciples. We are apostles in the playground, apostles in the church. Apostles in welcoming the welcoming youngsters in our social works, in the Eucharist, in hearing them. Therefore, I believe that these years should be the years in which the congregation, the entire Salesian family, with its particular particularity, should should grow should grow and learn to value much more our being Salesians of Don Bosco. And when I say this, I mean it's our charismatic identity. Thank you, Don Angel. We thank you for this um, uh, for this simplicity and the touch with uh, a touch of sim simplicity with with which you uh, respond to our questions. In these years, uh, we are celebrating the 400th anniversary of the death of Saint Francis de Sales, who died in Lyon on 28 December December in 1622. In a few days, it will be the recommemoration of his death. Um, we know that looking at him, Don Bosco chose his motto, Dami anima scetera tolle. Not only Don Bosco, also Mother Teresa kept this handwritten poster in a bedroom at the beginning of a mission among the poorest in Calcutta. Can I ask you, how does, Don Bo how does Francis of Sales Help us rediscover the strength and the beauty of Dami Animas. Well, it has been a year, continuous year, a, a beautiful year that we've been celebrating. And I would say that even I have a huge, a, a vast experience and a certain certainty of the fact that the Holy Father that uh, the Holy Father has promised us to the entire Salesian family in the world uh, with the charism of Francis of Sales that will 
that will help us that will surely give uh, in, uh, the holy father will give us a, a words a special word from his part it helps us it helps us to really deepen uh, deepen our understanding to help us what does it mean to be a solution what does it mean dami anima cetratole as the central point of our lives don bosco had this had this writing at the entrance of his uh, bedroom at the entrance of his room today we also have it at the entrance of our of our casa don bosco i believe that it is the essential point for our, for us as solutions i say this to you in all simplicity and passion i am a solution of don bosco who was moved who feels really moved with the solution mission that is really close to the poorest of the poor to the poor when i notice when i when i really see that most of our works our social works is among the pre, among the poorest of the poor but saying this but saying this i would say that it is not sufficient to to say that we work with a lot of conscience in social work love uh, working among the marginalized this is something very very precious but we need to remember in whose name that we are doing this work we are do we do this work in the name of Christ Jesus in our meeting in our meeting with the poorest of the poor we need to go and look out for the poorest of the poor because god had a predilection for the poorest of the poor this is the dami animas of uh, saint francis of sales francis of sales was a huge apostle of uh, dami animas one who went oh, one who went in search of those who were really far who are really far from Christ one who took his responsibility seriously of evangelization the danger here is is that we find ourselves every day uh, we find ourselves among the difficulty of being pastors and evangelizers It is human to say that uh, I cannot do this easily. It is easy to say that the youngsters don't have an interest for this. It is easy to say that I don't see any results and therefore we uh, we are happy with the little that we do. <coughs> But the youngsters have a need of the word of our presence that helps them to rise rise from their difficulties this is something that we must not forget in these days that i have been preparing the strena in the in the ultimate days the last three popes the last three popes had this to say to the youngsters let us look out let us look out for a huge library f- full of full of messages for youngsters full of um full of force extraordinary force and strength that helps them to really love jesus to be disciples this is the central point um this is the central point of unity absolute unity of uh, francis de sales and uh, don bosco this was his greatest font of uh, 
of inspiration. Don Bosco was, was one of the great persons to really interpret well uh, that which Francis uh, de Sales had to say and that which we could uh, uh, pass on to the youngsters of today. Thank you, Don Angel, that um, um, helps us to understand this urgency, urgency towards the youngsters. You have already, you have already uh, explained to us the why. The why, why did Don Bosco give his everything for the poorest of the poor? Pope is the ninth. Now, this this urjet of evangelization has different colors, has different meridians and parallels. There's nobody else who knows it better than you. After having met um, Salesians from all over the world from the Far East to Patagonia. And as you remind, remind us with the comment, the mission very often places us on the frontier when we habitually come into contact with Christians of other denominations, with members of other religions, with non-believers or distant believers. Well then, the question is, how can we live? the Dami Animas Ceteratolle, when people with, with whom one deals on a daily basis do not seem very interested in the things of the soul, or not so to be interested in the way for those who seek to live their baptism, how to really live Dami Animas. Thank you, Don Silvio. This is a very important question for us. In these years, many times, not, not a few times, I've had a sensation that many of our Salesian confreres find themselves in places that are very far, let's, where uh, where the Christian faith is in minority, probably uh, some some place in India with just three percent of Christians, some other country with which has a majority of Muslims, or Thailand, which has again a small percentage of Christians, or or there are a conference who find themselves permanently as missionaries just like St. Paul found himself among the Corinthians it is important that we director major and um, all of us in the capitulars of the general chapter we think about the Salesians uh, who find themselves in these places because we think we think from the point of view where the majority is Christians even though they find themselves in a reality where the majority of Christians it could be an indifferent indifferent um, Christianity. When we notice the news on TV, for example in Great Britain, which is which is just 40 percent of uh, Anglican Christians, the others, for example, either have an, a religion or no religion. In such a context, how can one be an evangelizer? How could one make real the Dami Animas? First of all, I think that we have 
a great gift that we have learned in the school of Don Bosco. It is the grand, it is the great gift and a respect that we have for the reality of the people, of the persons that we find in in the youth and their families. I say this with a firm belief of the of the of the last three popes, including Pope Francis, uh, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, who said. The Christian faith is not proselytism. It has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with the with the announcing of the, of the Lord's of the Lord Jesus Christ against liberty. This is the first thing that is very important. We know that today proselytism has its methods has has done a lot of bad, has done a lot of evil. Today we find ourselves that we cannot really proclaim a lot. We find ourselves in nations, for example, where even I cannot go with, uh, with the clergymen. But there we have our Salesians who, who go on, an, on, an, on a daily basis who work tirelessly and provide a beautiful testimony of their faith and the Christian life and Salesian life with their way of living, their way of talking, the way their respect towards the youngsters and this is what gives motivation for their lives. We find ourselves in nations, for example, in my in my recent uh, visits to India, there are hundreds and hundreds of youngsters, uh, uh, youngsters going to universities, who are Hindus, Muslims, and Christians. And I noticed that our conference, our conference, are capable, are capable of procla proclaiming about the Lord, speaking about the Lord. In, in a celebration of more than uh, thousand, thousands of uh, youngsters and they were able to speak about the Lord, to proclaim the Lord. This is, this is, uh, this is announcing, proclaiming, the, uh, proclaiming Christ. It is possible proclaiming the Ami Animas when we find ourselves when we find ourselves among those who don't believe in Christ, this would be the first. This would be the first announcing, the first testimony, with great respect for the religion of the for the others. Let, let us think about the Muslim world, the the world of Islam. Announcing, proclaiming our religion would mean. Would mean, would mean doing a huge service in the name of Christ with our testimony, with our values. Our schools, for example, our schools, our schools live by the values of the of the gospel the values of Jesus, of Christianity, to have a good rapport with the people, with respect, the huge value of uh, women, of uh, the brotherhood among us. All of this makes sure that the youngsters find themselves in, an alt, in another moment in their lives and are convinced of this way of living. This is really preparing them, this is what we could call preparing them for life.
This is also proclaiming the faith in Christ. This is announcing Jesus Christ and the gospel and the great values of the Christian faith. Therefore, we need to think of this as, the, as a huge gift. This is, a, this is the reflection that I would like to invite everybody to do. Thank you, Don Angel. It is very, uh, it's heartening to listen this, uh, uh, the breath, the Salesian breath that we're able to take. Dear so Don Silvio, think about our conference in 134 countries in which we find ourselves in uh, a thousand nine hundred odd um, houses presences that we have the christian faith <laughs> has a strong presence the major part is not in this manner in fact we are at the frontiers we are the frontiers and the peri at the peripheries of the first of the first announcing of the gospel this is very important to, to be highlighted who, who are anoi who who are those who we can call ourselves as us they are everyone is us thank you don angel these these are people that we are talking about is not only about um, a question of homilies that we do. We need to be sacraments of His presence. Returning, to, uh, looking back at our at our uh, continent of Europe, we have a lot of them who are baptized, who have a lot of interest, but it does not seem that uh, that they are very, that they are able to really meet uh, moments in institutions in churches. between these uh, youngsters and um, between the church that we find ourselves how can we make how can we help them uh, feel uh, discover the presence of Christ especially the, uh, everything by love and nothing by force With the, we have cases in which children that do not e still go to the church. What what do you tell? What do you have to say with in this regard? With regards to this question, I already connected with what we already just said. You already highlighted the sacrament of His presence. At times, one has a very frugal understanding, a poor understanding of, uh, of our congregations, Salesian congregation, that, our pres that the presence is something that is very special. I say this because, having been to different parts of the world, I was I was welcomed with this um, with the Salesian sacrament of presence. I would like to highlight about his presence, 
How how can we really live this out? First of all, starting from the Salesian sacrament of presence, you mentioned that the that the church that wants to welcome all its youngsters, all its youngsters. At times, there are many youngsters that seem uh, uninterested. At times, in God, at times in in the in the groups or in the church, it's evident that between these two real realities, the church and the youth, we need to find how how to make a bridge, how to bridge this gap. First of all. The first step would be to, not to do something on a level ethereal. The first step, according to me, for us educa educators, solutions, is that the huge transformation of the solution congregation would help a real and profound conversion conversion to the to the pres to the presence among everybody in the presence of families in the presence of mom, mummies and daddies especially among our young young youngsters it's the presence that I would like to emphasize a presence an educative presence already con uh, al already with our presence we are testimonies this i consider as very important secondly the holy father said many times in evangelic gaudio when he says about the discouragement of the apostles there is a rich chapter on which I also uh, emphasized many times where Pope Francis speaks about this discouragement. We need to recognize that uh, this illness, this illness that we have in the, in the church, the sickness of being uh, Cons consecrated disciples and priests is discouragement. <coughs> In certain parts of the world, it's different. For example, it's more difficult in Euro Europe today to be discouraged more than in Africa. This discouragement, <coughs> according to me, we need to have an inter interiority as an internal force, a certain certainty that would uh, take us towards, that would take me among them to propose them to testimony liberty, to do something good. Later, God, in his goodness and his providence, would find his way to find himself in us, face to face. Many times I found myself, I found myself in my life, uh, my pastoral life, among parents who live a real suffering because their children are not living the same way or the same mode in which they live, their parents live. The young, their children live in a way very differently, which is far from what they, from the ideal way. I would say to them, pray for your children. Continue to give, to be a test, to be a testimony to them. We need to continue to suggest, to propose, to give, <coughs> to give certain indications in our schools. 
even if we don't have a first uh, response, we need not stop. We need not get discouraged. We should not get discouraged. This is the strength of the evil one. I need to do everything for the for the kingdom of God for evangelization. According to me this would permit us a dialogue a rich dialogue between us apostles. How do we find ourselves for example? How do we find ourselves in difficulty? How do we react in moments of uh, difficulty? Do we return back to us to our insecurities, to our own um, for to our own strengths? For this reason, Saint Paul fascinates me. Thank you, Don Angel. This is a great encouragement that you give us. You spoke about the process of education to the to faith. That um, from that which I heard about the debates that we were speaking about yesterday, the principal focus of the general chapter, how our faith is a gift, is something that cannot be gifted. Now, the climate has changed. In the, in the last 30 years, there has been a growing awareness in the church, especially in the Evangelium Gaudium, that there is a process that we need to do. That the process of initialization, initiation. Do you have, do you have had any experiences that you have encountered in which there were certain processes of initiation of life, of faith, of hope? Would you like to share with us from all the experience that you had in different parts of the world? How could we really accompany in this uh, for those who want would they can also post their questions on Facebook or YouTube Don Angel <coughs> this dialogue for me is really beautiful on this first point that you were saying that uh, it's a gift everybody could say what they would like to say but for me it would be important to see my journey the great gift that uh, God what wanted to give me the great gift of faith that I'm grateful I'm grateful to the many who are responsible who helped me in my life who helped me to find and to discover the beauty of this of this faith of the beauty of this faith who helped me to learn to read to pray the rosary in order to arrive and uh, in my journey of faith to arrive closer to God yeah also in my relationship in my growth in my salvation life if you don't want to use the word uh, uh, education it's rather accompaniment with probably which would make more sense I would like to say, say to you that it is difficult for me to say that many with all the realities of this world 
I don't have many examples examples right now at at the spur of the moment that I could say with a certain certainty in all the years of my life always I've always found I've always found a moment with some youngster not with children I'm saying with youngsters who said to me going to a particular person going to a particular solution house or being a part of a certain group me uh, has ch has changed my life in a drastic way it has changed my life drastically participating in these groups and accompanying youngsters thus accompanying would mean to me giving opportunities even today we have hundreds and thousands of youngsters in all our solution houses which would be for us our daily food which has which really helps us to grow a lot in in our years in these years it helps us to grow in the ambit of faith it's the same let us move from from uh, from an expression that is much more profound to something that is more simple uh, in in the solution bu bulletin of january one speaks about a climate a climate of faith in which for example i found myself in the united states in the region of california in los angeles visiting a school having a di diversity of of youngsters of diversity of ethnicity we had many meetings that we met each other at lunch there at lunch there used to be a food food truck that would come and uh, <coughs> and and uh, sell different kind of food articles director director bought us three of those for three of us and we were there with this with the sandwich and water eating and at a certain point there were there were three youngsters of uh, 17 years old one youngster told me Rector Major, Rector Major, I would like to be a Pope. What should I do? <laughs> what must I do to be a Pope? The Rector Major said, yes. <laughs> he, he replied saying that it's a bit difficult. <laughs> it's not, it's not uh, being a Rector Major, it's being the Pope is much, much, much more. Okay, I I make this proposal for you. Why don't you uh, first enough uh, first begin becoming a solution, and later we shall see. And the youngster me sa te me tells me I don't say no to you, because in this house I found Jesus. For me, and my passion is Christ. I would say that this was the first time that f that I heard from the from the lips of a, of a youngster this expression Fr from St Paul yes but from a youngster this was the first time my passion is Christ I'm passionate about Christ said the youngster I was surprised I was shocked and then I asked him I asked his permission if I could uh, if I could uh, narrate this to the entire world and he said yes 
Don Silvio, this responds a bit to your question. Faith is a gift. And this gift, the Lord brings it to us in the simple things of daily life. For example, on, on one fine day in all in all our Salishan houses, if you were, want to arrive at Dami Animas, this youngster left me impressed in a very simple way. Thank you. Thank you, Don Angel. And we can hear in the background the bells of... Uh, uh, Maria Auxiliatrice of Turin. I'm already happy about the fact if I have not bored those who have been listening to us. You, have, you are transmitting to us a certain uh, richness that is unprecedented. Let's look out if there's um, some space for an, in, for an interval that we would need to do. Uh, we would like to remind you that this, um, this, uh, this interview is being translated uh, live in different languages, in English, French, Portuguese and Spanish. I would like to thank, says the Director Major, because this is a beautiful service that has been doing, that has been done to us. I would like to thank these conferences, and uh, I would, uh, I request you to offer them something good for lunch. <laughs> Every desire of yours is an is an order, especially in this uh, in this case. We thank uh, all those who have been sending us messages live. Uh, here we have the first question. The da mi animas exp uh, expresses a passion of uh, passion for souls also sacrifice and giving one's life how can we put these thing, two things together in your experience in your experience what is the biggest risk of keeping these things these two aspects separately if somebody if there's a solution or a community that loses this passion the first thing that I would say that I have when I hear this question, it, these two things cannot be separated. Or you give or you don't give. To say with one's entire heart, da mi animas, for example, and not living with zeal and passion and non feeling that my life that that my life and my time for others is almost like saying no to the solution charism it's like saying no as if the solution cooperators would would say no to their children Dami Animas begins from the small church, from the domestic church, from the family. From I believe that here one plays with life. It's life that's at play. The Christian world, the family. It deals with having a life full of sense. 
with others, with Christ, with Christ at the center, having a life where the latest, the latest novelties, the latest fall, uh, philosophies, all the other things are always, always <coughs> among us, uh, besides us. But the thing that is always at the center is Christ. It's precisely because of this many lives today are fragile. How to realize this reality? It is it is not possible if if it does not come from a conviction of a, of a fire that's within a life of love of for others for God a profound love for others and for God and I believe we are many in our Salishan family that have this desire of uh, the Dami Animas with generosity how Don Bosco how Don Bosco even with all uh, even at 68 years of age donated everything everything all his forces in his uh, daily life to love the youngsters and for the entire mission that he had at his hand I insist that it is possible so only when you have Christ at the center but it is also it is dangerous the, the, the danger here is spirit, spiritualism later it is something the service of Christ uh, in the, uh, makes me scared Director um, uh, Major says that um, what scares him the most are the managers of Dami Animas. What we're talking out here, not what we're talking about here, is the charismatic identity. Thank you, Don Angel. There was another, ex another. Um, question that came back to us while you were speaking. Have you known personally that who has really lived well the Dami Animas Cetera Tolle? Has there been a certain phase, a certain particular experience that has really incarnated the Dami Animas, an experience that you've had personally. Again, I need to, I, I need to tell you, it is difficult to say because uh, there have been many, many examples that I found in my lives. But I would go in a... to synthesize. I found Salesians, for example, that uh, really... Uh, that really struck me. For example, it would be like Paolo Albera, who knew, who got to know Don Bosco. In all my life as a Salesian, that I began in Spain, I had an exp I had experience of Salesian coadjutors. with their way of living was an exa living example of Jesus and Don Bosco. Salesian coadjutors with a big preparation, with an enormous preparation that who found themselves amidst youngsters, especially at weekends at, uh, at weekends, they would find themselves with the youngsters maintaining all the parts of the house. Another example would be 
For 38 years, there was a, a coadjutor who worked, who worked even uh, up to 12 o'clock in the night in a library. This, this can be done only if there's a person who is convinced of his uh, of the life that he is living, that life, the life, the beautiful life that he is living. I found certain couples in our Salishan family that uh, that really struck me. For example, a few days ago, I went. I, I went. Uh, I went for a, a celebration where I found many Salishan cooperators. Where there was a particular couple with four kids, with their uh, choice of life of having four children. They made an option for the Salesian mission in the name of Jesus and Don Bosco in that oratory and for many years the oratory has been taken ahead only with their presence I would like to also cite two examples which are very close to me I would say that I have not visited places or where I found where I couldn't find myself for example in Angola there I visited a Salesian house where there was a parish and I found a lay person with the name Berta, who had four children, she would take care of about 14 children, street children. And the Salesians would give us uh, an economical uh, um, support to this uh, to this work, but she was the one uh, who would take care of these children as if it were her own. She was a mother. She would say that some of them don't have uh, no one to call their mother. I am their mother. Now you tell me if this is not dami anima sheteratole. This, it's God who touches one's life. This is the way that Dami Hyanimas could be lived. I could write a book with such examples. <laughs> Sadly, with a shortage of time, we cannot cite all of them. We have a lot of uh, messages that are coming online thanking Don Angel for his message. Let's speak about another word, accompaniment. That's a part of our vocabulary. How would you say? How would you, how would you like Dami Anima's accompany, accompaniment to become a part of what young people young people can find when they enter a Don Bosco house or when they are met by educators? This word, according to the rector major, is the key. Is the key that will resolve most of our problems, institutional problems. We have a problem with vocations we make many plans 5.0 for vocation promotion and at the end the word the essential word both for parents for families for communities and solutions 
Also in, el, in, in different processes, the word is accompaniment. Accompaniment. To accompany would mean to be present with you, close to you, as a friend, as a brother, at times as a father or as a mother. According to me, this is this is the most important and beautiful point. Because to accompany does not really mean only to do. It's not just spiritual direction. We know the great, uh, great masters of accompaniment had been uh, Jesuits of uh, spiritual direction and uh, guidance. Whereas in the Salesian, Salesian way, it would rather be in the Salesian will be you and I with God and the Salesian community. It's not just it's not just one particular moment, an action or an hour. In fact, there are many things that are transmitted to a person in accompaniment. Just saying that I'm always with you, especially when you feel down. To tell the person what can we do. We do have a uh, we do have experiences in our in our families, in our communities, in our institutions. It seems to me it seems to me that today we speak more about the entire force is about a uh, life of accompaniment. Accompaniment would mean Accompaniment would mean We thank you, we thank you uh, Don Angel so, To conclude I would like to explain, uh, tell you that the, the, the series would continue as you could see on the screen on the screen does uh, uh, Don Silvia would like to say when I spoke about the the strena of this year, when I spoke about models of life, I would like to speak about this great figure that I spoke about, how a certain interiority, mystical interiority, could be so beautiful. I would like to say thank you Now I can I can begin to work al along with you. We thank you, dear Rector Major, and we wish you a, a happy Christmas. Thank you, everybody, and uh, happy Christmas to everyone.